so kind of still on the subject of these microservices, like one of the topics is this idea of um, versioning, canary deployments. Like how do you do that? And, and typically what I see a lot of people do is use some sort of like API gateway to be able to do that. Maybe they'll like put together a big open API spec. And um, at least I'm familiar with like AWS API gateway where, you know, you're able to, to do some like canary, you know, deployments. Maybe you're just doing that with a load balancer. Um, but th there's a lot of different ways that people do this. Um, and then there's like a NATS way to do this, right? And, and it turns out it's kind of like, again, a composition of uh, a couple of our different technologies and how they work to kind of express like a lot of the same outcomes. And so do you want to talk a little bit more about um, what versioning canary deployments look like? Yeah, yeah. So this is a fairly short, but I think pretty important um, topic uh, and, and little little demo to, to showcase this, but it's a classic thing where um, systems are never static. So once we deploy, whether we're deploying new versions to fi fix bugs or new feature releases or what have you, um, as Jeremy said, you need to keep deploying new, new versions of things. And so uh, Nats actually has a very elegant way to uh, handle this and the kind of core technology, which is actually used for uh, a handful of different things within Nats, um, some of which we, we won't cover, but we can quick highlight them maybe at the end, is called uh, subject, subject mapping. So it's this notion that when a publisher uh, sends a request or publishes a message on one subject, uh, you can define a mapping that effectively takes the input subject name and uh, converts it to a different subject name that is then routed to a subscriber of that message. So in this particular case, and for this like little segment, we're going to show, and, and the motivation behind this is really that uh, currently the service that is uh, deployed right now is subscribing to the subject rethinkcon.greeter.v1 because it's the first version of the service. And um, I've heard it's good to maybe version your things, your APIs uh, at times. But uh, maybe you don't want to necessarily expose the version number, let's say, to as part of your public API, public uh, subject names, let's say. So it's very simple to say, I want to define a subject mapping that actually goes from Rethink Con Greeter to, to uh, this V1-based uh, uh, subject. And so just for those who aren't really aware of what like sort of a message, uh, the structure of a message, a message is simply a set of strings that are delimited by uh, periods. And um, and then there's two other characters that you can define known as wild cards that might be used in certain contexts and subject mapping, it supports it. But you can do something like rethink con dot star and then map it to rethink con dot greeter dot, let's say, uh, dollar sign one or something like that. So you're able to basically any token that matches the greeter, it'll it'll basically carry it over as a, sort of a um, re regular expression matching uh, pattern, if you, if you will. So in this particular case, why this is cool is because you can very easily then do canary deployments and subject mapping also supports weighted, um, weighted traffic uh, or tra traffic shaping rather. So it's able to say, I want to take my input uh, su uh, subject as rethinkcon.greeter, and then I'm going to 90% of the time route it to the, the stable V1 version that I has been running, and only 10% of the traffic actually goes to V2, as an example. And then, of course, if you want to, you can increase that on the fly, and so you can define this as server configuration, or you can define this actually at the account level as well using um, the NSC tool, or soon, I'm sure, in even in, in Helix one day. So it's the ability to be able to define these weights, gradually increase them until you're com comfortable with V2, and then V2 can take over all the traffic. So um, another, another interesting point to this, sort of distinguishing this public versus internal subjects, you can also define because of uh, Nat's permission system, you could say, I wanna keep sort of my applications, my services that are, that are subscribed to these V1, V2, V3, what have you, um, subject names, you can keep those internal with a certain set of permissions to subscribe to those. But then for, let's say, client applications that you want to abstract the, the public API away from those internal ones, you can define a permission that basically restricts um, the clients to be able to publish only to that sort of non-versioned um, uh, 
subject. So that's sort of another thing to keep in mind and pretty powerful construct. So, yeah, that's something that people don't really know, right? Because I think uh, some people are yeah. familiar with the subject mapping that it's inside of the config, just the, the config, but you can also do all of these things um, inside of accounts. And so when you think about that from mm -hmm. not just from a multi tenancy standpoint, it's like, oh, cool, they can manage their own stuff. You know, maybe we could we put it in Helix someday and somebody who's managing their account can go, you know, create canary deployments on the fly right there as well. Um, but you can also think about this like we've been doing this a lot with leaf nodes where maybe somebody wants to access a stream. Um, you know, a v over a leaf node connection, but they all they, they want it to to kind of be treated like it's very internal here and not specifically named, or they, they want to be able to create more location transparency around specifically named assets. I know that's a big topic, but like mm -hmm. a lot of really interesting things with um with uh with that subject mapping. Maybe let's say you are a um maybe let's say you are a store, right? And that store it just wants to publish to a, um, a subject called inventory. Um, maybe in the cloud, that is called inventory.storeID. But you can remap that subject for that leaf node connection to say, well, I just want anything that's uh, you know, inventory.storeID to just be mapped to, to inventory. And so the, lo the locality has to know less information mm -hmm. about itself and can just operate independently and still have this really cool fine grained like connection with, you know, its hub as an example. And so there's a lot of really neat things that you can do with subject mappings, not only canary deployments, but being able to kind of um, make, you know, uh, namespaces cleaner in terms of multi-tenancy or multiple organizations or leaf nodes or hub and spoke, you know, uh, topologies. It's really neat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a that's a great point with being able to define subject mappings at the leaf leaf layer too. Um, to yeah, to to basically say, oh, I always want to map this subject to revamp it to my local ID rather than maybe being concerned about other other store IDs that exist. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's quick quickly quickly share. All right. So what we're going to do here is actually deploy our V2 service, which conveniently is already deployed. Um, just one instance at this at this time. Yep. Okay. And so just to kind of show one bit here, we can do on the command line. We can do ethincon greeter. V1, and we can get back our message, and then we can do V2, and we can get bonjour. It's probably terrible pronunciation. And I didn't provide a name, so that's why that's that's there. Um, but you can see all with all the metadata there, you have your V2 service, and it received it on the V2 subject. I love so, that the, the next iteration is always has to be a, a French iteration. Yes, <laughs> that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, so I'm going to use one of my little secret things again um, to enable, and I'll show show you what the mapping looks like. It's very simple. Uh, map rethink on greeter. Cool. All right. So, what is the what does the mapping actually look like, at least on the subject um, within the config? I can type server config. That's what it is. Cool. So, all it is. Let me open up. Actually, in there we go. So the mapping, you can see here, I have uh, the input subject to rethink conduct reader. So that's again on the, on the publishing requesting side. And then I, I specify my destination to be either V1 or V2, and they have equal weights in this case. So basically we should observe now, if, if we send a message, you're gonna be able to see um, different, different weights. And so I flipped over, sorry about that. I flipped over a parameter in my secret KB. And now if we go over here, you can all do it interactively. 
you should see now it's flipping back and forth. Yeah, this is this is really so cool. Fifty percent greetings, and then there it is. So now it's basically transparently doing this. Um, so I flipped a flipped a little switch, and now it's using that kind of public subject name rethinkcon.greeter, and that's obviously getting now mapped behind the scenes to one of the two instances that that exist. And of now course, this might be get, getting the number of instances. For this V2. might be getting ahead of myself, but how, how did how did you set up? How did you switch over everybody? You were using a KV um, in Nats, right? So, are, do we have dynamic <laughs> configuration happening here, or I'm am I jumping the gun? Oh, you might be jumping the gun, but maybe maybe okay. we have our last section. <laughs> okay, okay. To, to well, dig I'll, in, I'll leave dig it into for the last section. Then. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. All right. So, so that, that's, that's really just what I wanted to uh, show with that. Um, very simple, but you just define your mappings. You can do any number of subjects, any number of weights, as long as they obviously add up to 100. You can simulate, though, if you don't add all of your weights up to 100, you can actually uh, you can emulate data loss, right? So you can say, oh, the, a message got published. It actually didn't get received. It just got dropped on the floor. So you can sort of emulate a little bit of uh, data loss. And so your applications can see, okay, if there's not a responder, if a message got, doesn't, doesn't pass through, what, what do I do? And are you handling the failure cases properly? So that's another nice little thing to do. And it's all very simple to configure either in the server or uh, on your account, uh, account level. Very so, cool. Yeah, this seems like a really easy, worth, easy way to, to um, set up. Um, something like... Yeah, from subject and then to subject, and then you can define a weight of say 50%. So you can define through NSC that defines it and then get, get you get it pushed up to your server and then the subject mapping just works. It's pretty cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I think I'm getting a little giddy. So do we want to move on to, let's talk about um, extending stateful services to the edge.